Welcome to another episode of my GoPro and Paralens journey. In this two part episode, I will take you through my video light journey. Yes, I've made the decision to use video lights. In part one, I'll let you know why I made the decision to use video lights and I go through the specs of what I chose. We then will assemble the lights, mount them on my GoPro rig. I then adjust the setup to achieve neutral buoyancy. That was fun. And finally, in part one, I talk about a minor quality issue which was resolved immediately by Orca Torch. So let's get right into it now. So, they've arrived super fast. You know I'm not a big fan of big unboxing videos, so we're not doing an unboxing video. This is just part of the whole me starting to use video lights video uh, based on a comment from one of my viewers I think he commented on one of the Dara videos but I have, and you've seen in other videos particularly when I go on the east coast in the UAE on Paradise Reef, Purple Reef uh, I'm not getting good images when I'm going under ledges and under rocks and things so yeah I think the time has come for me to bite the bullet and start using video lights those are the two DV 910s, the 5000 lumen lights, which can be used. They've got three settings, I think from 500 to 5000. So that should give me, with my GoPros, enough light for most most things. Remember, I'm not going looking to be an award-winning videographer. And this is the little, I think it was the DV 530 with the, with the snoop. I am going to get more into try and do more close up and what you could call macro. You can see a few Im images here that I've been taking with my um, GoPro Hero 7. Um, I always keep the packaging. The reason I keep packaging it, it, if I'm going to sell it second hand, um, you can get a little bit more price if you've still got the original packaging. This is the smaller one. I always like it when you get a lanyard. That must be the charging cable, spare row rings. So I keep all the packaging. That's not sure. Oh, that's like a protector ring. Got a spare one of those, the spare row rings. That's a lanyard. That's the charging cable. This is the mount. I'm just going to focus on using the bigger lights in this video. And there's the snoop cover, which just screws in, in there. So, never used one of these before. So that will concentrate the light down onto the, the subject. Um, I've seen some videos online it does seem to give a good effect, but these two will be work in progress. I'm not taking this to the Maldives with me. I'm not gonna work on this for a while yet. These are the big boys. Now, you, I had been trying, if you go back on some of my videos, I had been trying with the two um, Tovatec Fusion 1500 torches to give me the lights and that. The, the problem I found with them, although they were good lights and they had a good spread, they are heavy and they do make the whole setup very unwieldy. Had some reasonable results, but I've got to get a bit better. You know, it, it is important. I never thought that it'd be important, the balance when you're using a GoPro, but it is once you start to add light. We'll just get one out for now. Let's just see what we've got in the box. So obviously, we've got the charger, cable. I like the fact that they supplied it with a British plug. That's, I guess, the external charging. This is one of the things I liked about this. There is an external charging. Plug and spare O-rings, another protection, spare protection, that's, that's pretty nice. So that does get a bit scuffed up and damaged. I, I think these weigh underwater, I think these are about 430 grams and underwater they're 230 grams. So I do have some floats. As soon as we've finished filming this, I'll be on the boat looking at the floats because my GoPro setup at the moment is near neutral. So I've got two Hero 8s and the Paralens Fakita on the frame and with one big float that I've got across the top, it's near neutral. So before I go to the more dives, I shall just play around with these and some small floats. I've got some arms, and then we'll film the setup. Um, you won't see that until I'm back from the more dives. So that's it for now. I've got a bit of work to do over the weekend, just playing around with this. But from what I've seen in the unboxing, it all looks as good as expected. I mean, these, these do come, these are rated very highly by people on YouTube. I did pay for these. Critter Hunter did reach out to Orca Torch and they did give me a, a very 
welcome discount. I have no experience really of using video lights with the GoPro. I don't know what settings to use or anything, so I'll be studying over YouTube and talking to my friends this weekend, and then we'll we'll see what happens. All right. You saw me unbox from Orca Torch, so I thought I would just show you what I'm probably going to use as a setup. As you know, as I'm an absolute amateur at this, and when I'm in the mall dives, I will play around with it. You saw in the unboxing, just in a, a little a plain brown packaging. I would like them to come in a case, so I thought I like when I go travelling. I like everything to be in cases. I'm not a big fan of the really the Pelican boxes and all of that because they they are heavy. So I found this. It's a GoPro soft case, uh, special on Amazon for 29 dirhams. The cutouts are kind of arranged for, for GoPros, but I've just modified it a little bit and I can get two lights in there fairly secure. So this one I've already assembled. You know, I get the charges in, I get all the spare parts in and it just slips up and it's protected. So I think that was pretty good value. So I've not assembled this one yeah, I just thought I'd just show you what you've got to do. So the first thing you need to do is open it. You can charge through here as well um, and remove those discs because they isolate the battery from the head. Before I, I go in the water, I will be removing these O-rings and greasing them up. But for now, we're just, because we're assembling this, I just want to quickly show you. You don't need to take them to pieces. You see here, there are charge adapters. Um, I'm not sure if I'm 100% happy yet with the way that goes on. I would like a little stronger magnet, but we'll see. When I'm, the purpose of me taking these to the mall dives is to try and see. But it seems it could just do with a little bit more power to stay in place. Okay, so the light comes with the little shoe here and, and the mounting ball, so you can fit it to your frame. It comes with two screws. I guess that is just in case you lose one. Um, there are two screw holes and they're both threaded, but there's only one hole in the shoe. So I guess there was a kind of design design change. Um, it also looks like you could get some of these that are threaded to make it shorter, um, which I personally might prefer or not. I don't know, but this is what it comes with. So that just goes, whoops, around the other way. You, now do I know it's around the other way because when you put it that way it's on there so that's that's the way you just right and then this can be a little bit fiddly whoops as you see I managed to catch it and then you've got to put this in now see here you know it could do with a shorter um, so I, yeah I'd really like to, to whiz that around so um, just note to Orca Torch please can you make that a bit shorter and get it done so it easily turns. It's a small issue because once it's on, I'm not really going to take it off, right? Because I'm going to keep it in the case. But now I've got to try and get that in. A little bit fiddly, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. Personally, I will take these out and I'll use a little bit of waterproof thread lock because I'm not planning to take them off. Um, one thing I did notice, this is this is a potential problem, right? That's not in very tight. So again, I will be thread locking that and there's, you know, there's no Allen key there for me to tighten it up. So I'm gonna thread lock that. So we have no risk of that coming off underwater. And there you see, I, I played with a box cutter and got that just so they fit in there and they don't hit each other. I mean, what you could do is actually buy a piece of foam or, and cut it out to fit or you could play around with the inserts that come in this particular and put some but I'm happy with that the way it is you know it's, it's going to go in a backpack for travel so yeah quite pleased with that and then what I need to do I've got some heavy duty plastic bags that I'll arrange all these spare parts in instead of these flimsy little ones so just um quick yeah I've, I've been testing some other lights I bought these this one from or two of these I got them on AliExpress, they were advertised as video lights, da di da di da, um, $90 for a pair. So I thought, right, let me buy them and test them. If they don't work, I've lost nothing um, because it's for the channel. 
and guess what they're absolutely hopeless as video lights there's no um, proper beam it does need a diffuser on um, and I thought okay let's play around get some white acrylic or something and make a diffuser and see if we've got a cheap solution guess what one of them died um, I was gonna test the the lumens and lo and behold went to test it the thing died so yeah avoid Borat um, so-called dive lights they're not then they're not even good really for torches and the price at all I mean I was lucky I got a discount but even the, the list price on the website if you're serious about underwater videography are quite reasonable compared to other brands on the market and we'll find out as I say on my trip to the Maldives how good they are but I'm not expecting anything untoward because they've been Orca have got several sponsors of big scuba tubers and I've seen the reviews from them online and they're all happy. Critter Hunter is very happy with this particular light so it's good enough for Crint Hunter, it's good enough for me. So that, I'm not going to throw it away just yet because I may be able to salvage some things off it. Waste of money. But it was an investment for the channel so we'll put that over there. Let's talk, I've not talked for a while about my, my setup. This is my new setup, you'll see now just a picture of where I was before with the Movo frame. Um, the problem with that it was very heavy. I got this whole setup. I think it's just over ninety dollars, which I think was pretty reasonable. So that was the tray, um, those floats, two additional floats, like that, and I thought that was a, a pretty good deal. And I've been using it. I used it on my last Maldives trips, and I'm very happy with it. I've got the like a two GoPros on there. These are two eights. Um, I can switch out my seven, which has got my um, macro lens, and I've got the old para lens put on here as well uh, uh, there are more parallels videos coming you know I've lost a bit of interest in it in, in many ways but I've not given up at the moment as I stand to me uh, GoPro's the way to go but that may change um, we are we have got some nice footage comparisons uh, videos coming up it's gonna be at least a month away but why do I keep it on here one thing I do like about parallels it is quite reliable it will always start it takes an age to start it takes an age um, it, even when it's switched on and you're underwater ready to go you've got to hold this button for quite you know st substantial amount of time and you could miss some footage but the GoPros um, are known sometimes just to not switch on you know the battery is 70 80 percent and they just decide not to switch back on that's one of the reasons I have two on the rig um, but having said that it's a minor annoyance I need footage because I'm a scuba tuber right and I need footage on nearly every dive that I do especially when I go on a trip so I like to have two in a frame I leave the parallels on there because of balance this is just slightly negative so we'll talk about the floats I have got some arms um, because these are gonna these weigh, these are negatively buoyant, I think around 230 grams or 250, something around that. You'll see it on the spec sheet anyway. So I bought these big boys extra. So I got two of these and two of these. Um, the price is coming up on the screen now. I got them on AliExpress. Again, not very expensive. I can't remember offhand. And these two came with that. So I've, you know, I've done a little clip on one I prepared earlier because I didn't want you to see to watch me messing around with it and it looks like I'll have to use those two floats there. I've just been playing around with the floats and I think this may be the solution. I really haven't got a clue how easy this will be to manoeuvre when it's on on the camera um, but we're going to set that up next but from a weight point of view this just floats. It's just wanting to float you can see there. Now the rig I've got now is slightly negative so I'm actually going to try this um, I'll rig the camera up tomorrow and I'll just do a bit of testing in the, in the sea um, I'm not diving tomorrow because I'm flying tomorrow night but I will ask one of the guys who's on the boat with me just to check it all out and see how it is now this is Gulf sea water which has got a high is high salinity so in the Maldives where I'm going um, the water's less dense so we may have just cracked it like that if it doesn't work what I'll do I'll just use the larger float and it'll be somewhat negative but we'll see it's all an experiment okay so you can see I've only put the one float on with putting this one on it just, was just too bulky tomorrow we'll have a look at this 
and just see how it is in the in the water it is very it is a lot heavier than what what i'm used to now but again once we're in the water well not me once my friend steve is in the water i'll get his opinion on that and then i may have to figure out how to get some more flotation on size wise i'm happy with that you know i don't want stuff all the over the place i'm not going to be using the video light on all the time as you know i like to shoot in ambient um, conditions and then most of the time and then um, color correct but under the ledges um also maybe on some of the shoals of fish i might i might get better results i don't know you know again i keep saying um, i'm an amateur at this any any advice please put them in the comments but this is what i'm gonna try first in the Maldives hopefully it's not too heavy I can lose some weight by taking off the parallels I've got that up my sleeve so to speak so yeah we'll see how this is tomorrow um, just get some comments from Stevie um, as to the balance and the weight but yeah I'll try that um, a bit bulky it gets a bit bulkier now I mean I started with GoPros because I wanted it to be nice and easy um, one thing I did notice, I've really got to put thread lock on here because if you go to try and adjust that, it comes starts to unscrew from the ball, which is not great. Or if you do want to adjust, then you've got to push it away. But I'm going to put a bit of thread lock on there. Oh, see, again, it comes loose. So um, after a bit of use, a bit of corrosion there. But that is a bit worrying, to be honest. Um, that's probably the only feature I'm not happy with. Well, we tried the setup. The next day, as I said, my friend Stevie tried it out just off the back of the boat for me. I couldn't dive that day because I was flying and the balance was pretty good. Um, it was slightly negative, but remember we're in the Gulf, Persian or Arabian Gulf, call it whatever you want. And we, it is a very dense, buoyant uh, body of water. So I suspect you know, it's gonna be too heavy when I get to the ball dives, but I will be correcting it when I'm there. You know, I can take off things like the parallel lens, I can take off things like the, the close-up lens, and let's see if we can get it neutrally buoyant. That'll be coming up. I now have a perfectly balanced rig, as you'll see in the footage. I removed the uh, Polar Pro filter, I removed the parallel lens, and this is now where I want it to be. securing this it's not going to be a big deal because I'll put some ball joints on here and use clips but yeah it's where I want it to be um, I've enjoyed using the lights it took me a while getting used to them um, I tend to be using the medium setting now more than the full setting um, because if you go straight on to full the fish seem not to like it plus I think I'm getting overexposure I'm color blind so I don't really know so let me know in the comments please so yeah this is the end of my week in the Maldives uh, achieved my objective I'm happy with the all talks on my first dive with the lights um, they worked fine but I noticed one of the lights was bubbling out the back as you see here and I was really worried about that I thought water there was water ingress into the light and I thought oh no you know I'm reviewing this product and it's going to be a fail on the first dive and I was a bit sad about that because you know everyone's got good opinions on Orca Torch I spoke to Critter Hunter I speak to Matthias Levo and they've all got positive things to say and I thought oh no here's going to be me again being Mr Negative and I didn't want to be Mr Negative anyway completed the dive light worked fine opened it up and it it, it charged it accepted the charge so that was pretty good so I thought right at least the lights working there's another issue 
So I was charging the lights because of the size of the, of the battery charging station. It, it wasn't feasible to leave the lights on, on the camera setup and use the external charger. So you'll see later in the video, right at the end, that the external charge, charging uh, port on that particular light wasn't working. Contacted Jimmy Orca Torch, fantastic, immediate reply. We think there's probably been a short inside and that's just been some bubbles coming out. We'll send you a new one. Wow, it arrived literally within about five or six days after I, I spoke with Jimmy. I mean, and they didn't just send a replacement battery, they sent a replacement light. I mean, that's just amazing service on behalf of Orca Torch. All products are gonna have problems. It's how you deal with the problem and keep the customer happy. And on this one, Orca Torch really pulled it out of the bag. And remember, I'm a customer. I paid for these lights. They didn't send them to me free. So it's the last day now, and I finally get to use the external charging connector. You'll see there, before you connect, it's green. And when you connect, it goes to red. So I'll just connect up the other one and you can see that as well. But yeah, it seems they're working. As long as that goes to green in a few hours, I'll be happy. So there we go. I'm gonna take that on. Yeah, I think this is the one that's leaking and it's not charging. So we have had a fail. Those bubbles early on have resulted in this not being able, able to be externally charged anymore. I guess it will need a replacement battery. I will talk to talk, talk about that. I'll just show you now, connecting it as I have done all week. As soon as that goes in, it accepts the charge. There again, proof positive that the external charging on one of the lights, and it's the one that bubbled at the start of the trip, um, that'll work. So there's, there's a quality control issue there. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. I can still charge the light. And let's see what Orca Torch say. I'll be in contact with Jimmy there in customer service. I hope you enjoyed part one. In part two, you will see my lumen and underwater brightness tests. I also test the burn time at full power and very interesting results they were. I show you some of my results in using the lights for the first time. And I talked with Matthias Liebel about setting up the lights correctly. And finally, I talked to Critter Hunter, who's been using the same light, the DV910, for quite some time. And it's good to get his perspective on how they do long term. Part two will be uploaded tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Any comments welcome. Remember, I'm a beginner and I really need all the help I can get. Please subscribe and watch part two tomorrow.